Hey there, everyone. We are talking about increasing your profit margin with smart spending today. Super excited to dive into this topic because there's a lot of myths out there or beliefs, sometimes limiting beliefs, right? We've heard things like, you know, it takes money to make money. Um, we've heard about, you know, bootstrapping it. And I really want to talk about what this looks like and how you've got to be careful on both sides of the spending, right? So today I just spent a lot of money. We actually just closed on our vacation home. So our second home that we will now have in Florida. And it was so funny because I actually heard, um, when was this? I would say about nine years ago, um, nine, eight years ago, maybe we actually were building the home that we're in right now. And I remember when we were in your building, you basically like put it together and then the builder gives you the quote. And I remember when we got the quote back, we were like, whoa, okay, no, <laughs> we, we were not spending this much money in the house. And I had this mindset, I had this limiting belief at the time that like I didn't identify with this type of home. Like this home is nicer than the home that I grew up in. And there was this just like crazy limiting belief around like, I don't think we should do this. And it was my parents that actually said, if you can afford it, like build it, like why not? And what's crazy is the house that we bought today was the exact number that the builder originally started the, the conversation with. So if, if you could go back and tell us like the old Stacy from however long ago that was like seven, eight years ago, like in seven years, you're going to actually be spending this again on a second home. I think my mind would have been just completely blown. And here's the deal. We start to have these, uh, I think Tony Robbins like explains it like a thermostat, right? Like when the temperature hits a certain degree in the house, your thermostat kicks in, right? And it will pull you back to where you maybe belong. And we have to get good at, yeah, so I'm going to, I'm just going to repeat that in case it's some that, something that didn't click for somebody. So let's say you have your thermostat set at 71 and it starts to be 72 in here. Your AC will kick on to bring you back to 71. And as we're talking about spending today, as we bring this up, right, there's going to be some thermostats that are going to be very like, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I should spend this. I mean, when you hear certain numbers on spending on Facebook ads or investing in a coaching program or hiring somebody and like a full-time salary would be, you may start to have those freak out moments, okay? And trust me, in a couple years, like if you only knew what was coming and what you were about to invest in a team or have your payroll, um, our payroll between both our businesses right now is like six figures a month in payroll. Like I can't even fathom like the old Stacy would be like, no way. Like, what, what are you going to do if you can't make enough money to pay those people? Right. And all that stuff would come up for me. So this is such an important conversation we need to have. Okay. Now I will say that I have seen with myself over the last 20 years and many of my clients, it can be really confusing and overwhelming to figure out where to spend and invest and when to save, when to be smart with saving and when to be smart with spending, okay? There's a time and a place for everything, okay? Now, you probably have a few things that are going on right now, right? And you're thinking, okay, I don't have time to do this and I wanna hire somebody to help me. Or I don't really wanna wait six months or nine months or whoever, however long it's gonna take, right? I would rather invest in a software or in a program that can fast track it, that can automate, that can, all the things start coming up, right? And we know that there are some things out there that could absolutely make our lives easier, make us more money, right? Get us off of the hamster wheel. But the biggest thing is we just don't know where to put that money. Okay, now you wanna feel good about making smart investments in your business that keep it running smoothly and allow for a healthy profit margin. So how do we do that? Where do we go from here, okay? So I'm going to talk about places um, CEOs overspend, okay? And I want to share pros and cons of a few of these things. Okay, I hope I didn't just freeze. Okay, so the first thing that I want to bring up is done for you agencies. This is a big one. Every time I meet somebody and they know what I do, they're like, great, can you just hire me, that person? I'm like, no, <laughs> but I can teach you how to hire that person. No, 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 I just want you to do it for me. Like, can you just do it for me? I'm like. 
that is such a quick fix, right? Like that is such, like if you were a parent and you, your child asked you to do something, you're like, no, you have to learn how to do that. Like, this is a must. Like I can't ride the bike for you. You have to get on and start trying until you figure it out. Right? So with done for you agencies, I think there is a time and a place. Okay. So first I want you to realize that a lot of times you will overspend for somebody else just to quick do it for you. Okay. Now you might think, but that's worth the money to me. It's worth the investment just to get it off my plate. But what I have found is a lot of times done for you agencies, not all, not all, but a lot of times done for you agencies, they're just overcharging you and you become this like checklist, right? Of another person they have to just get done for today. Like just get her a social media post because we need one a day. That's what we promised. And they're just whipping them up and they're not necessarily thinking, how am I going to get her leads? How am I going to get her fill in the blank, right? So we want to make sure that as we are hiring certain agencies, we are at least holding them accountable for what they promise. Because you know, when you jump on a sales call and they're like, oh, we're going to blow up your Instagram. We're going to do this and we're going to do that. And, and all the things they promise, you better be writing down. And then you better be tracking them and you better make sure that you are holding them accountable. I think I explained that I had hired a done for you agency for Facebook ads with my studio recently. Ever since the iOS update changed, we cannot figure it out locally. Like we're doing it, but just not as well. And online is very different than local. So I have somebody else that does it for online than I do that somebody has it for local. And I thought, okay, let's do it. And I told the guy, he was like, you're going to have to have a 12 month contract with us. And I was like, listen, this is another tip for overspending. I was like, listen, I know you should be able to show me results faster than 12 months. And I am not staying if I'm not getting results. So I'm willing to do six months. And honestly, I probably could have said 90 days because you should see something in 90 days, but definitely six months. So six months came and went and I said, we're not going to continue. And he's like, what? Like, look at what's happening on Google AdWords. And we increased 33% here and we did blah, blah, blah here. And I'm like, but I haven't made my money back. And that's what I need to see. Like, that's great that you got 33% higher on Google something, right? But I didn't see it in my pocket six months later. And I need to know. And what's crazy is I did my due diligence. I have a lot of friends that are using them. I called up my friends. I said, listen, what are they doing for you? How are they doing it? All the things. And I had friends be like, no, they're doing great work. They're doing this. And I'm questioning if my friends are tracking the work. I'm questioning if they're tracking the income. To me, it wasn't a smart move. So now after spending that, I have now gone to a coaching program to learn it internally. Because I know that if I can just put somebody in there and learn it, they're going to come out way stronger and way smarter because they know I'm not going to keep doing it unless we're getting results. Okay. So I think, I, I mean, I use done for you agencies, but I track and I do not stay unless it's working. How many of you in the chat have used or are using a done for you agency? I'd love to see that. Okay. I will say that there are some amazing ones out there. They're just a little bit harder to find. And as they scale, sometimes they lose what they were so amazing at because now they're just hiring, getting people in and their KPIs, their key performance indicators are just like, just go get me, you know, one social media post a day, right? So just be careful. I'm warning you here. Okay. All right. Number two, being cheap. All right. So places CEOs overspend and you're thinking, wait, I don't get this. Like why is being cheap in the over <laughs> spending? And this is why, because if you're cheap and you go the cheap route, sometimes you have to pay the cheap person and then you've got to pay the person you should have paid <laughs> in the beginning to do it the way you actually wanted it. And now that price point, you said, no way am I spending that. You just spent that on top of the cheap person and you're overspending. Now this happens in so many, I mean, this could be in the done for you agency. This could be when you were hiring like the, the cheap front desk person that came in and only asked for 12, even though everybody else is demanding 15 and you thought, perfect, let's hire her. She's here for 90 days. It doesn't work out or you keep her for a year and then you finally fire her. And then you've got to go and hire the person you maybe should have hired right in the first place. So being cheap, Sometimes it's a great deal and it's a great value and you hit the jackpot. Sometimes it's you get what you pay for. It's a little too cheap than it should have been. And the value wasn't there. And you actually spend more than you thought you were going to. 
Do not be cheap, okay? Um, I will never forget the client that was like, gonna hire me, renew actually. She was actually already in my program. She was gonna renew. And then she very bluntly told me to my face that she actually was just hiring one of my clients um, who I they know all my strategies and they were just cheaper. <laughs> and I was like, interesting, especially that you just told me that to my face. Okay, interesting. Um, however, my client had only been in business two years and I'm thinking, you get what you pay for. When you ask that person something that they've never experienced, they will not know the answer, right? So just be careful by being cheap, all right? Okay, um, next piece I want to share, jumping ship. Ugh, there's so many things we can talk about here. Jumping ship. So you got a plan and then you hear another plan, right? <laughs> or you're, you're, everybody's like blowing up how amazing Pinterest is and you're there. And then you hear about like TikTok and you scrap the one strategy and then you jump over here. And before you ever finish the TikTok strategy, you hear about Instagram and then you jump over there, right? This happens all the time. One of the things I do when I'm coaching, if you're in any one of my programs, you know, we have a file on you. <laughs> and in that file, it says what your goals are. Because we like to see how often people are jumping ship. We're like, wait, what are you doing? Because last time we talked, you were doing this. Did you do this? Well, I was going to do that and I did start on that. But then, you know, a couple of weeks in, I was hearing somebody else talk about this. So then I thought, why am I not doing that? And we like to show people, what are you getting when you jump ship? Okay. And a lot of times what people recognize and they like look at that self-awareness is I get nothing because I keep jumping ship thinking something better is over there. They're the grass is always greener type person right? And they just keep jumping to the next thing and the next thing and they become a starter and they do not finish anything. And jumping ship can be very, very, very expensive, right? So I always tell people like double down on what it is you're doing. Do not go to the next thing until you finished it. Even if you're thinking, but I know this isn't the right one, or I know this isn't the right thing, or I know this isn't a, right? Sometimes some of you just need to be in repetition of a finishing person. Like you need to identify as somebody who finishes. So sometimes I'll look at somebody and think that probably isn't the right strategy. But if I don't make her or encourage her, right, or him to finish, they will be on this never ending hamster wheel of jumping on the next bandwagon, right? You've got to get good at finishing. So another thing that I always tell people to is, They'll say, Stacey, what are you using for this? What software are you using? What coaching program are you in? What? And I always, I don't even want to tell people because if you hear that I'm doing it, you think, well, I'm not using money.com. Maybe I should be using money.com. Stacey's using it. It must be better. She must have done the research. She must have done this. I'm going to scrap Asana and I'm going to go over here. And now when you could be working on money making activities, you are transferring your stuff from Asana into money.com. And will it make you more money? Probably not. Like it probably won't, right? There are many options out there when it comes to software, when it comes to like your next offer, your next platform, your next strategy. And I think a lot of them, most of them will work if you work it. But if you're always switching gears, you're going to be like, I don't get it. I, I did that thing you said. It's like, well, you started that thing I said, but you didn't finish and refine it and maintain it. And that is who starts to become successful. Okay. Success leaves clues. It's the people who finish things. One of our crazy successful um, powerhouses is Karina. And Karina, I'm not surprised. We had this 100K challenge inside a powerhouse. And she goes, am I the only one that posted it? Like what's going on? I posted it. You said to post it, right? Karina is a doer. She's an implementer. She's a finisher. I'm not surprised she finished and posted it, right? And any of the powerhouses listening, follow her lead. Like the people that get things done, right? They don't just hear a strategy. They do a strategy. They implement a strategy. We've got to get you there, okay? Now, I have today, let me share this. 
If you want, I have a whole checklist of different ways to increase your profit margin. Okay. If you want that checklist, go to um, comment underneath this video, profit for, or sorry, but not profit first. Um, that is a book, um, but comment profit. And then um, on uh, the podcast, if you're listening, DM me on Instagram, profit, and I'm going to get you my profit checklist. Profit first is one of our strategies we use. And Mike Michalowicz was on the podcast. So make sure to go to listen to that. If I just gave you shiny object syndrome and you're like, okay, I've got to go reread that book. Okay. So comment profit, we will get you that information over to you. We really have to make sure as you're thinking about what I want to gross, what I want to make all the things you have to ask yourself, but what is the profit margin? Where am I going to see that? And when you stop overspending, the money you're already grossing will go so much further, okay? That was one of my biggest things that I noticed during the pandemic. We have still not recovered our gross revenues from the pandemic in our studios. Our profit margin is higher than it's ever been. It doesn't even matter that the gross revenues are down. The profit is where you're going to feel it. And if you're not profiting or you don't have a high enough margin, you will never get off that hamster wheel, right? We are seven, we both of our businesses are seven figure businesses. And let me tell you, it's not about how much we make that month. It's about how much we spend and the difference between the two. All right. It is all in the profit margin. Start tracking that as a KPI versus just gross revenues. Okay, I am bringing on one of our rock star powerhouses. We've got Mandy Emerson coming on. I'm sticking around for a little bit of an on-air coaching call. If anybody wants to hear what Mandy's up to, what she's got questions on, and I am sure some of you are going to get massive value as I coach her. Mandy, let's do it. Okay, Mandy. I'm pretty. I'm okay. pretty sure you picked that. That for me, that was oh. me. Okay, good. So. Cause there's just been a, a couple changes, but, um, I had a question prepared, but now I have other ones. For hey, you. you go, you pick my brain on whatever you want to do first, Mandy, tell everybody what your business is. Yes. So, um, I'm Mandy Emerson. I'm an Instagram coach and strategist. So I help female entrepreneurs use Instagram to grow their business. Um, I have a membership. I have a few DIY courses. Um, I'm actually in the process of hiring a new EA. Oh, Mine, okay. um, Amical partying, totally fine. Things happen in life and she is on to spread her wings and fly, which is great for her. Not so great for me, yeah. <laughs> but this allows me to kind of uh, get my ducks in a row when it comes sure. to creating my systems and all of that. But I was wondering this the other day, even before all this happened is, um, and you talked about it in your presentation too, of, I mean, not being cheap, but the done for you services. And I, wholeheartedly believe to have that one person when it comes to their payroll. And when you said six figures in your payroll, I was like, my I know. Gosh. Does that make you just like, <sighs> makes yeah, my heart I mean, a little a bit. Lot when you see it and you're like, holy cow. Yeah. yeah. So I just, I want to know, how do you know you're paying the right amount or if you're paying too much or right, like, right. i never want to undercut anybody for their work and their time. I also want to make sure that I don't go broke paying them yeah. for their work and their time. So is, is there some kind of percentage I should know about or like a market okay. so amount? Good. Yeah, this is such a good question. Okay. So first of all, there's always ranges, right? One range is you can go on the lower end and they don't come with experience and you train them. Okay. The other end is you just like, I don't even know what to tell them to do. I just want them to come and know what to do and tell me what to do. So I'm going to go on the higher end of somebody who's already been an assistant for somebody already. Does that make sense? Okay. Yep. Okay. Is which one's better? Here's the deal. If you don't know how to train them and you're like, no, I really don't know what to do. Um, then you may want to go with somebody more experienced. I will say Mandy, because you're in powerhouse, I'm coming out that EA, all the stuff. So you're going to timing, that, right? <laughs> yeah, we're literally going to have it done in like, probably the next week it'll be done. Thank and, goodness. um, so you could go on the lower end and say, watch these videos. I want you to do what Stacy's telling you to do. And I want you to do that for me right yeah. now. Anybody can learn that. Okay. Yeah. So you really have the option to do both. I would say for you, I would kind of go like in the middle, right? And as okay. you start to interview, you're also going to see what they're expecting, what they are coming in as their like number they need. And some, I once heard somebody say, no, it's not how we do it. Like if we promise like, like the position pays 25 an hour, that's what we're paying. And I'm like, I just don't get how that's possible because if you're thinking it's 25 an hour, but all you get are entry level people that are requesting 15 and are excited about 15, I'm not overpaying 
somebody who really should be getting paid 15 just because I said 25. At the same mm -hmm. time, if I say 25 and I get this amazing C-suite, worked at this amazing place and I can't believe they want to work for me and they're requesting 30, I may justify that I'm going up to 30, right? And I'm not saying you give them what they ask for, but you do decide like, what's the value here? Now, yeah. I really believe with an EA, they should be filling you. Up, and we say, when we say EA, it's executive assistant, but they should be removing things off your plate to allow you to make up their salary. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So yep. the EA should never cost you money because mm -hmm. if they can go do that and I can go make more money, I should be able to pay way more than what their salary is. Does that make sense? Totally. Okay. A thousand percent. Okay. So, and you don't have to start full time. This could be somebody, I, I like to say the phrase like part time with potential for full time in the future, right? So you yeah. could do something like that. It could be 10 hours. It could be 20. Um, it depends. And it depends on how fast do you need them? Because if you hire yeah. somebody part time and they have another full time job or they're just busy and they don't want to work all day. All of a sudden, Mandy, you're like, I need you to help me with this webinar. And they're like, sorry, I just checked this from yeah. three hours ago. It mm -hmm. just depends on what you want. Like, I know if I message Christina right now, she's going to be on it. Like her notifications That's what are I on. Want. Yeah. And, and if I you want, want that. that, you may want to find full, like do full time. And with that, they don't have to just be your, like people always say like, what would they do full time for me? They could do mm -hmm. a lot of things for you. And it doesn't have to be just EA level work. They could right. be a client concierge inside of your membership and helping with the community management. Like there's a lot of things they could be doing if you just don't feel you have enough time to give them. Does that make sense? Totally. thousand okay. percent. That's All right. Good. Did I answer your question or do you have a follow-up question from that specific question? No, no, that's okay. good. This is, I, I think this is all um, divine timing a little bit. I know. Sad for me, but also good for her, but also good for me because it's yeah. going to force me to get some things in, in work, in process. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's, Good, but bad, but mostly good. So okay, I'll good. take it. <laughs> okay. All right. What other questions do you have? Awesome. Um, well, so actually on your, the, 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 your checklist Winning? of done for your yeah. services, the, uh, um, jumping ship. Yeah. <laughs> ah, I bet that file of yours, of my, of me <laughs> says that because I do get shiny ob object syndrome because I get so excited, but how do you know? Because being in the social media mm. industry and, the, and all the strategies, a strategy can always change because the industry changes or the platform yeah. changes. How do you know when it's time? Okay, I got Instagram. How do you know when you got Ooh. Instagram? Or how do you okay. know when you got TikTok to then go over to Pinterest or you know these other platforms? Okay, I love this. So you're saying, when is it appropriate to jump ship? Yes. Okay, so the big thing is you want to master before you diversify. I believe you have definitely mastered Instagram. Like, you know what you're doing. Your organic growth is insane. Your reels are going viral. Like, you've definitely mastered it. Before I would say to go on, my question is, have you fully utilized that massive following of yours? Is there anything else you could be doing to convert higher over there? Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't know that I, I don't know that I know. I think. Okay. I don't know if I'm missing anything. It'd be interesting to see if I, if I was, cause okay. I'm not to say like, I agree with you. I think I got Instagram, yeah. but if I've made a business off of it, then I yeah. hope that I have it pretty far yeah. down, but it, it, it is always changing. Instagram yeah. is always evolving because of the other platforms around it, Definitely. but I feel confident enough that I can move with those changes. It's then tackling something that's similar to Instagram, like TikTok or even Pinterest that's coming yeah. out with those video type things. Okay. Um, that I'm just I, like, here, go do it yourself. Like the fact else. that you don't have like a to-do list of stuff to do on Instagram sure. right now is a good sign. Like if somebody's saying you okay. have mastered Instagram, but, but let's say this, like how often should you be posting reels roughly on Instagram? Like what are people saying? What is Mandy saying? I'm at least saying once a day. There's no reason why you shouldn't be doing once oh, a wow. day. Oh, wow. Okay. So my point is if you believe once a day or you're, you're hearing once a day and you've heard this from like a, a guru or a mentor, right? and you aren't doing one today, then you probably haven't mastered it and you're not maximizing it. But Mandy, if you feel mm -hmm. like from all the strategies you've know, you've tried, you've tested, you've learned about, if you're doing them and doing them well, now the question becomes, how can you put this on maintenance mode where you don't lose it? Because a lot okay. of people will go to TikTok or someplace else and it's like that they forgot about it. You can't just set and forget right. it. 
So right. if you've got maintenance going where people can be checking and KPI reporting and telling you what's going on, you can set it and let them think about it and watch those KPIs increase while you go shift and say, okay. And that could be something your EA, like, I don't know who all, everybody's on your team, but let's say you wanted to say to your EA, you are going to get me daily metrics on my reels, my Instagram, my whatever. I need to make sure it's going up every single day or at least like hitting your numbers. And if mm -hmm. it's not, you know, you got to get back in there and figure this out. Right. Right. So you could do right. that while adding on another platform. I would only add on one more at this time. I'd pick the one you think is best for you. Mm -hmm. And then rinse and repeat what you just did on Instagram over on wherever. And yeah. then, then you go, okay, we've mastered that one. Let's put it on maintenance mode with somebody watching it. And then I'm going to jump over here. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Okay, good. Where do you think I you're going to go about that? I, I actually already have somebody working on Pinterest because I think okay. it is wildly underutilized. Yeah. Um, and it is a search engine, um, but they are coming out with those, um, the pin ideas that are video based. So that um, be great. I see you on YouTube shorts and I'm like, oh, she's on it. I got to go do that too. Because oh, what's funny is I didn't even know I was doing YouTube shorts. <laughs> That is a great sign of your team. That's amazing. I mean, but because I like, it's one of those, yeah. <laughs> it's one of those new things. Yeah. It history of strategy and in, in digital mm -hmm. marketing has shown if you hop on something new that is destined to do well, yeah, you will be a part of that rapid growth and that exposure because it's. I always equate it back to cosmetics. When a, a company comes out with a new lipstick, they want to to show and feature yeah. people that are wearing that new lipstick. So they're gonna put those people out more than, you know, the old stuff. So it's yep. the same thing with these new things. So I think YouTube shorts and the nice thing about yeah. all of these is sure. it's repurposed. Like oh, it's, yeah. you know, one of those work smarter, not harder type of thing. So Absolutely. Pinterest is already in the works, but I think YouTube shorts is my next yeah. venture. And YouTube shorts. It's interesting. Like my kids love YouTube. Like they don't watch TV. They watch YouTube. <laughs> they are like, can we watch YouTube shorts? Like it's like a thing for them. Like they even know what oh. it is. And they're six and nine. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. I wonder what they see. I well, see. I'm so fascinated by yeah, it now. So when, when they go to watch like they're like, they watch this one family called J house. And when they go to watch it, they're now shoving YouTube shorts, like where the uploads are. So when they used to see like, mm. oh, there's a once a week upload. Now they're seeing these like seven second videos and like, oh, let's watch a short. And I'm like a short. And I'm, now I'm realizing like they're all together and they're seeing them. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I know. So See, it's just that quick content that everybody wants. Yep. So I'll all right, Mandy, anything else before we wrap up? No, I, that's, that's all really good. And the okay. EA stuff, I mean, that was un, unplanned, but obviously well needed divine timing. Okay. I tell you what, for sure. So definitely go check out Mandy, Mandy's reels. Like Mandy is such an entertainer. They're so, mm. and that's why I think you always go viral. Cause it's like your, your videos just keep people's attention. They're different. So go stalk her on social Mandy. Where can people, <laughs> where, where are you on social and any place else you want to send them? Oh gosh, I, I'm all over socials because I love them so much. But the main one is Instagram at the Mandy Emerson. Um, yeah, so come hang out and, and chat with me. Amazing. Mandy, thanks for being here. I appreciate you Thank so you. much. We love having you in Powerhouse. Yes, I appreciate you. Thanks for having me. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for catching today's training. If you didn't take advantage of that profit sheet with all the different checklists of things to get your profit margin higher, Type in the comments below the word profit. We will get that over to you. If you're on our podcast listening, go to Instagram and DM me the word profit and I will send that checklist your way. All right, everyone. I will see you next week. Bye.